What's going on, Fire Team? Welcome to Shift Fire, and today Izzy and I have compiled a list of our favorite futuristic military technology concepts. Let's get crazy! Number five, for me, exosuits, baby. Exosuits. We've seen them in Edge of Tomorrow, we've seen them in Elysium, all right, designed to augment the soldiers' abilities out on the battlefield. I've seen articles, you know, and real life models of exosuits being given to, you know, the DOD or just at firearm and military tech kind of shows. Yeah, one of the coolest ones I saw was the Marine Exosuit Guardian, mainly for logistics stuff, like picking up everything, sure. load carrying equipment. Not necessarily the fastest thing. I wouldn't think we'd see this out on the battlefield anytime yeah. soon, but the power loader from Aliens, sure. uh, used to pick up heavy loads, can do the work of 10 Marines, but it's one Marine doing the working. And speaking of the battlefield, we also saw concepts like the Hulk utilized, although super cool because it was advertised to take off loads and to enhance soldier fighting capability, right. but it kind of crashed and burned. It was scrapped when we found out that it was actually reorienting the weight just to a different body part and actually causing harm. So that Guardian sounds kind of cool. Sounds promising. Yeah, man. I mean, we all want to get to the point where we have thousands of soldiers going out onto the battlefield with Iron Man type suits. There's just so much technology that goes into the research of not only the power demands, oh, having somebody inside an armored suit, you know, you can get jostled around by an explosion. Your internal organs are gonna be bleeding. It's kind of a nice uh, inspiration from science fiction, but I think right now, probably more so in the load-bearing equipment, sure. uh, non-combat roles. For my number five pick, I went ahead and chose the Corner Shot. It was developed by the Israelis as a means of allowing individuals to shoot using this rifle-like platform that has a built-in hinge that hinges left and right in order to observe and shoot targets from behind cover. Bold move, Cotton. Coming up with this, thing. it's been around. It's advertised as combat proven. And I like the intention of, you know, preserving soldier lives by not going internal to buildings, by observing from a safe distance. Biggest concerns in my mind, especially when I was doing research about this platform was accuracy because it's utilizing a, a Glock 17. First of all, you know, you have a small nine millimeter round, potentially something bigger in the future that would have ballistic penetration capabilities that, you know, 9 mil falls short on, and then accuracy as well. It uses a camera with a crosshair that, into my mind, I think of, you know, when I get a new weapon system, you know, we have to zero, we have to qualify on this. Like, how accurate is this camera? What happens if the camera gets shot out? How easy is it to reload this weapon system? Right. Practicing the principles of CQB, you know, speed, surprise, violence of action, that kind of goes out the window, and when you sacrifice those principles, I see more problems happening that way. When it's in its regular configuration, like, it's still a very big package for clearing buildings. Right, um, it seems like overemphasis on one aspect, which sure. would be to protect the soldier and not expose them to fire and being able to shoot around the corner, mm -hmm. you end up sacrificing a lot of other practical things. You know, just for a mention, I think the corner shot deserves to be on this list of futuristic military tech. Let's talk about number four. What do you got, buddy? Jetpacks, folks. Jetpacks were also my number four. And actually, these things have been around since like the 50s. Governments have been trying to contract and get jetpacks going. Obviously, weight and power is a big concern, but we've come a long way. And there's a few companies like Martin Jetpack and Flyboard Air that are developing their own versions of jetpacks. Ones like a hoverboard. We've all seen kind of the uh, the Iron Man type where you've yeah. got the, the modules on the hands, modules the on, the hands. on the back. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's the one that I'm actually starting to see the most being used. And I, honestly, I think it's a super cool and very ambitious technology. This one I'm actually super excited to be implemented because we've seen it be used and demonstrated in a maritime environment, which I think it is absolutely perfect for. And just with a little bit more research and development that goes into it, like how do we place weapon systems on this jetpack? Because how are we able to, you know, manipulate our guns if our hands are completely occupied with steering modules. Right, yeah. I feel like it would be really good for uh, infiltration and exfiltration. Oh, yeah. I don't know th what applications there would be for actually attaching weapons onto it and making it into some sort of fighting module. Yeah. But I think for transportation for individuals, there could be some solutions there. Combat rescue. This could be absolutely amazing for not only in a maritime environment where you need to go ship to ship, but in my mind, I'm seeing mountainous environment. Mm. You know, you can get one dude on a jetpack and you need to go 
up high or you need to set in a lead, dude hops up there, sets a lead in for everyone else to climb. This technology is actually being, you know, pushed by DARPA, which is the US Army's pretty much R&D department. I think it's super cool technology. I'm very excited about it. Number three. I'm just gonna go ahead and call this one the vomit gun. What? Just because it was a failed experiment, it seems not to go <laughs> anywhere or was put into mainstream production, but I think it's worth a mention because the ideology behind this piece of tech, this is around 2007, a company called Invacon Inc. decided to support the military's needs of creating a non-lethal weapon in the form of a vomit gun. It looked like a flashlight that emitted radio frequency that would excite and interrupt the equilibrium and the hearing of the person in the path of the rays mm. that would induce extreme nausea and in some cases vomiting. Wow. So just by pointing this device at someone, it could completely incapacitate them, have them throwing up everywhere, and I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I appreciate the non-lethal aspect of sure. it. Sure. You know, good for crowd control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, hey, you protester, throw up. <laughs> Boom, and there's like, Bleh! Or and hand him an IRS tax on it. That will also yeah, work Yeah, there well. you go. Man, screw the IRS. I hate those guys. <laughs> but that's besides the fact. Well, the only thing I see that's terrible about riot control with this is who wants to handcuff someone that's completely covered in vomit? And like who's going to clean up yeah. after that? Oh, they're bringing in the vomit gun, you guys. Like, I'm not gonna work that night, you know. I'm kind of sad it got scrapped because that would be just a really fun thing to mess around with everybody. It's allegedly also, one of the aspects of this piece of tech is that it's able to shoot through walls. Oh, okay. So it's just a direct radio frequency burst. The Northrop Grumman MQ-8C Fire Scout. This is an autonomous helicopter. Well, it looks like kind of a regular commercial helicopter, but the front cockpit is like just painted over because there's nobody inside. There's nobody inside. And it's meant to be mostly, I think, long range reconnaissance, sure. uh, intelligence gathering, or maybe even long range targeting. Okay. Uh, I'm a big fan of anything where we can try to eliminate the human factor just to save human life. If we can take the soldier out of the equation and put a machine in there instead, you know, for All these helicopter pilots are just punching the air right yeah. now. <laughs> I know that there are some missions that we should never replace a human pilot with a machine, but the dumb, dirty, and dangerous, maybe we can get a robot there instead. It has kind of a goofy design because, like I said, it's a helicopter, but it's all just painted over gray. It's uh, like Knight Rider, huh? Yeah, it's Knight Rider. Yeah, right in yeah. the sky. E exactly, yeah. We're gonna need Airwolf to take care of that thing if it goes rogue, all right? We all know Skynet's coming. I'm curious to see how it's implemented and yeah. if it is, you know, accepted with open arms in the military. Because <laughs> we've all seen Top Gun Maverick. That's and right. And Maverick did not want to be replaced by that Big Bad General's unmanned drone program. That's right. Let's check out our number two pick. My number two pick is the electromagnetic rail gun, folks. Ooh. This is the stuff of sci-fi legend. We've all heard about rail guns using magnets to shoot projectiles long distances mm. at a high rate of speed. This one can shoot at 4,500 miles per hour, smashing through concrete up to 100 miles away. And especially the design, if you look at it, you see pictures, it looks like a sci-fi gun. Because sure. all these actuators and this long, cool barrel. Yeah. It actually fires a solid projectile. It's not like a cartridge. It's not an explosive tip or anything. It's just a strip of metal. And that thing could just rip through its targets. Now, the only problem with it is it takes a lot of power I'm to get sure. a projectile shooting that fast for that far. Still in development right now. Probably not gonna see it in service for quite a while. I know I'm a little familiar with the rail gun just because on the pop culture field manual podcast we have also done a futuristic episode so if you like this one be sure to check that out but, i mean just the size of these cannons if you will are they're huge yeah and you know they're not mobile and a lot can go wrong with them yeah they're like completely unstable yeah, <laughs> yeah. like one problem you can have a giant explosive right there in place that has a lot of shrapnel to throw really far you know i could see it used for anywhere from like ground to surface capabilities or just trying to get offshore fires yes. onto a target yes. that's cool plus it's also great in transformers 3. i know you have the rail gun <laughs> Who, how'd you get this number <laughs> just shoot it please giant alien robot Come and invade our planet so we can develop the railgun more quickly. Moving on. My number two is going to be something quite exciting that I think at least. It is DARPA's X-Acto Bullet. 
And that is a real name. I didn't make that up. The Exacto stands for Extreme Accuracy Tasked Ordinance. We love now, our acronyms. Now, this is literally a 50 caliber bullet that can steer itself in mid-flight in order to hit targets. It can change directions. It can change directions based Woo! on where you want it to hit. So it has an in onboard targeting system that allows it using, it's like the little flares little on Little fins? The fins, using fin technology or what <laughs> crazy thing, I don't know. But I read this and I was like, this is nuts! Is only meant for sniper systems because I was thinking in my head, I was like, huh. If you try to replace every single bullet, you're just handicapping soldiers because you're gonna be like, even the worst person can like hit their target. You know, what if they don't have these bullets or this gonna suck the nickels? You know, great for these sniper platforms because it allows them to not only shoot more accurately, it allows them to increase distance to target. Yeah. And most importantly, it allows them to get that one shot, one kill every single time. And I was watching a video demonstration on the technology and you can literally see the targeted projected ballistic path that the bullet's gonna take highlighted in red. Wow. And then the bullet path in actuality on a moving target. <laughs> so then the bullet moves and it goes and hits the target every crazy, single time. Crazy, man. So crazy, right? Absolutely <laughs> nuts. The Exacto bullet. It's on DARPA's website. I'm not sure if it's actively being pushed right now. I'm thinking that thing is going to cost a pretty penny. I was going to say like $7,000 a bullet or something. Yeah, it's going to be like the javelin. You know, when you're <laughs> shooting javelins, one javelin shot is like tens of thousands of dollars you right. just shot. So I'm thinking of the same thing with my head. No way this could be available to conventional forces. It would only be available to like top tier sniper sections in small quantities. Right. Yeah, like we could actually curve bullets. Now, yeah. Which is crazy. Angelina Jolie, here we come. It was all based on you, baby. Moving on to our first number one, numero uno. What do you have? I have the adaptive camouflage. Me too! That's right, man. There it is, see? Okay. <laughs> I'm very excited about this, because this one, not only is it a great concept, mm -hmm. but it looks like it's well on its way yeah. to being fully developed and fully realized. It's right in line with current technology trends, Absolutely. right? Thermal vision is widespread. Mm -hmm. Night optics are widespread. So we Absolutely. have to come up with a counter to that, not only for individuals, but for vehicles. This was one of the few that I'm like, it's foolproof. They utilize these honeycomb shaped panels. Panels that are layered on top of a vehicle that are able to be heated up and cooled down in order to mask heat signature. They can also act as another layer of ballistic protection. Cause that was my thing. I was like, these panels are cool, but what happens when Private Joe Smith hits a fucking tree? Yeah. You know, and they completely <laughs> shatter. Your vehicle's even more protected as well as they can emulate the shape and heat signature of another vehicle or go completely dark. Yeah, so the adaptive camouflage is developed by BAE Systems, taking the heat up or cool down the panels so that it can actually maybe signal friendly forces uh, for communication out on the battlefield. In my heart, it's Bay Systems, because they're our Bay for coming up with this. We were fascinated by all of these concepts equally, but the BAE Systems adaptive camouflage that really feels like it's on the cutting edge of current technology. I gotta hammer this into people's heads that the near peer threats that we are facing, IR and thermal is okay. one of our biggest problems. From a ground infantry perspective, if the enemy has thermal, you will never be hidden. Going to JRTC, you know, my squad was tasked with conducting reconnaissance, but the enemy had drones with thermal. So mm. like they were never able to do their job just because they always had the drop on them. So thermal is such a big threat out there and the capabilities to defeat them at a giant level like vehicle size is amazing. I'm hopeful to see this implemented in US forces because right now it's only being developed in foreign nations. Yeah, hopefully they're our allies. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, leave a like because we like you team and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> no, I watched this video the other day. It's a bunch of New Yorkers just saying, Bing bong one, in the Bronx, two. yeah. But wild, ambitious, maybe a little bit crazy.